Welcome to today's daily service. I'm thrilled that you've joined. We begin our service today with some words from the Apostle Peter, written initially to Christians who were very much under pressure. At that time, under pressure from persecution for their Christian faith. But whether or not you're experiencing that as well, I hope these words encourage you. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, so those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. Notice that it's assumed that even though we're under pressure, that people might be looking in on our faith and saying, tell me about this reason for the hope that you have. Why are you so hopeful under this pressure? Peter assumes that Christians will have that aroma of hope about them, even in difficult times. And notice that he assumes that some will be offended by Christian character and, and put off by it and speak maliciously, we're told, against our good behavior in Christ. You might think, Andrew, far from good behavior in Christ, I feel like I've been squeezed into the world's mold under these pressures. Friend, those temptations aren't unique to you. All Christians face them in all manner of different circumstances through the ages. And you're invited now to come to Jesus and to say sorry to him for the ways that you failed to live for him, as I have, and to seek his mercy afresh have a new start. So let's use the words of this confession to pray to God together. Our Father in heaven, we have sinned against you. We have disobeyed and ignored you. Please forgive us for the wrongs we have done, for being selfish and greedy, for bad temper and angry words we are sorry, for hurting others, for lies we have told, for things we have stolen, for the wrong in our hearts, we are sorry. For not trying to please you, for not helping others, we are sorry. Please forgive us through your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for our sin. Help us to live lives which please you. Amen. Well, following on from the words we just read in 1 Peter chapter 3, he goes on to assure those believers that he's just challenged. Listen, for it is better if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. Well, what's the best compliment that you've received recently? The most encouraging one that I received actually came from my dad. He said to me and to my wife, Julie, you've got a lovely young family. You're doing a good job as parents. And it took our, took our breath away. If you are a parent of young children, you know that most often you feel like you're dropping the ball, knocking it on rather than marching it down the pitch. An encouragement that struck to my heart. What have you heard recently about you that's encouraged you? What has someone said? Well, you'll know if you've been watching over the past eight weeks that we or eight uh, daily services, we've been looking at each of Jesus' beatitudes at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, one after the next. And now we've gone through all of the initial eight. And Jesus, at this point in the sermon, pivots and he says something encouraging to us, his disciples, something about who we are. A compliment? I think more than a compliment, an encouraging description, not of a well done, good job there, but an encouraging description of who we are. Tomorrow, Vaughn will lead us in looking at you are the light of the world, he says to us. But today, let's read Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, and say it aloud together. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. The salt of the earth. What could Jesus mean? What would it mean to us if he were to say, you are the pepper of the world? 
Is he saying that we have flavor? Is he saying that we're essential to bodily function as, as salt is to our bodies? Well, Jesus' first hearers would have known what he meant. Yes, then, as now, salt was used for flavoring food, but that's a nice-to-have function. Salt then had an imperative, vital function as a preservative for food. If you harvested, harvested a bunch of meat that you wanted to keep for some time, you would wrap it in salt and rub the salt in, and that would allow you to keep the meat from rotting for a much longer time than you would have had had you not applied the salt. You were the salt of the earth. If you were to be taken from this world, from your circle of friends and family, with your Christian influence, if that were to be removed, the effect it would have to moral and spiritual decay is probably more than you might reckon it to be. Imagine... If someone who lives as you live, as a Christian person, well, wasn't there. Jesus assumes that when you remove his people, small as they are, insignificantly seeming as they are, when you remove them, the effect is beyond what we might think. But Jesus says, look, I'm glad that you're keen to be out there doing, but don't forget the effect you're having. Simply by being one of my disciples. Imagine the impact of someone who is simply humble and poor in spirit. Imagine the impact of someone who mourns their sin and the sin they see in the world around them. Imagine the impact of someone who doesn't lord it over others but who is meek. Imagine the impact of someone who hungers and thirsts for God's righteousness. Imagine the impact of someone who is just merciful. The impact of someone who is pure in heart, longing for God most of all. Imagine the effect of someone who is simply one of God's peacemakers, tending with care the circle of relationships that he's given to them. Imagine the impact, the ripple effect of a life that's willing to bear reproach for the name of Jesus Christ. It all seems small. A bunch of salt. But oh, the effect that you have when you simply are one of Jesus' disciples, even before you get about to doing what you'd like to do for him. What an encouragement, but one that comes with a warning. If salt loses its saltiness, Jesus said, it can't be made salty again. It's not good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. And Jesus is saying, don't lose your Christian distinctiveness. Don't let the world press you into its mold. You might think, well, salt can't lose its saltiness, Jesus. Sodium chloride can't become anything less than sodium chloride. Any, any way more than water can, you know, cease to be water if you were to take out the H2O. It just, the, but Jesus knew at that time that salt was often mined from the Dead Sea. It would be very impure. And if that dried salt were to get wet, the salt could be leached out and a white powder would be left that looked like salt but wasn't salt without its saltiness. So let's turn to God now and ask that he would keep our Christian distinctiveness under the pressures that we're facing today. A prayer for us to pray together. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us both a sacrifice for sin and also an example of a godly life. Give us grace that we may always thankfully receive the benefits of his sacrifice and also daily endeavor to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Father, we want to remember those who are especially on our hearts at this time, and we bring them before you in the quietness. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's sing together now.
for your will. The cross has saved us so Again, thank you so much for joining us today. Go with the words of Jesus Christ who said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all peoples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And know that I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So go into the rest of your day and your week with him. Amen.